He's a charter Rotarian, second president of the club. But Harry Johnson is here, and I think we need to take note of that. Harry Johnson. All right. So hey, Rand is here. I'm ready. 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 Recognitions. Let's start with uh, uh, so during sunrisers, it's uh, summertime, and a lot of us like to travel, so I'd like to. Recognize a few of the people and, and where they've been. Uh, Tomas, you recently were in Portland. Hey, I was in Seaside. Okay, so uh, west of Portland, where I had never gone, been before. My wife's family's in Portland, and we had a little mini family reunion out there. Some folks from Coeur d'Alene came down. And Seaside's an awesome. I was like, why are we leaving the cold coast to go to the cold coast? But then when we got there, I realized it's a lot different. It's, it was warm, actually. I got into the ocean. Um, really beautiful place. Had a great time. The kids had a ball, tons of stuff to do. So, yeah, great. Great. Uh, Carol, you have a fun trip. Yeah, I just got back from a three and a half week road trip with my husband um, from here, between here and Minnesota. Car camping along the way, wow. national parks. Bears in Teton and Yellowstone. Interesting bear encounters. I now own a canister of bear spray. Um, <laughs> one of our campgrounds, we had a grunting herd of bison go like the feet of our tent and uh, lots of friends and family along the way. So it was a really good trip and trying to get back in the groove. So, anyway, it was fun. All right, all right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Howard. We went to uh, Eugene, Oregon. Uh, which we do every year for the Bach Festival and just great music for two and a half weeks. And our daughter lives in Eugene and our son lives in Grants Pass. So really nice. Did you did you play at the Bach Festival? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't I wish. No. Uh, they had professionals come in from all over the world. It was tremendous. Yeah. Wow. That's exciting. Thank you, Howard. Sarah. Um, my favorite trip was the Yellowstone Trail Park in Zephyr Cove, we rented a huge five-bedroom house, and my grandmother turned 80, so that's when we her half-sisters and all of their kids and cousins, and my cousins live in San Francisco, and my cousins from Colorado, and my uncle in Hawaii, and Texas, and all of them, we all joined together. So it was really fun. Yeah, sounds great. And, uh, uh, oh, go ahead, Deb. So I was fortunate enough to spend three weeks in Alaska, Ooh. and I'd never been before, and I wasn't... So I like to travel internationally, so I wasn't, didn't know how excited I was about Alaska. And then I got up there, and it's just beautiful, and it's huge. And I don't know if you folks have been, but it's just amazing. So I was as far south as Seward, and as far north as Denali National Park. Um, spent several days in Denali. It was incredible. Um, thought I'd see a whole lot of moose. Ended up seeing a lot more grizzly bears than moose, which was a surprise. Um, but it was 
just, it was wonderful and it was a great trip. That sounds amazing. And uh, Ed, I saw you, did you sneak in a Giants game there a while back? <laughs> yes. So my wife's best friend of 30 years called us a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and said, hey, we're going to be in San Francisco, and that's near you, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're an inch away in that. <laughs> so we went down and spent uh, a long weekend with them. They wanted to go to a Giants game where they got killed. Um, but it was nice. We did the touristy thing. We rode the bus with the open top, and we walked the Golden Gate Bridge. It was fun. Oh, wow. Well, that sounds great. All right. Anybody else have a chance to get out of here? No. All right. I do want to recognize um, um, Jose, who uh, recently got a new job. Jose, do you want to tell us about it? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, after, you know, plus 10 years, I'll be leaving uh, HSU Dining Services, uh, and I'll be starting at Wells Fargo in Eureka. What are you going to be doing at Wells? I'm going to be starting off as a teller and then, uh, you know, taking my first steps uh, into the industry and then moving up and, uh, yeah, wow. getting up there, hopefully. That's exciting. Time. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. All right, birthdays. I don't see Dan here today, but he did have a birthday, so we'll send him a card. We'll send him a card. Uh, let's see. And anniversaries. I don't see uh, Brian here either, but apparently they had an anniversary as well. So. Um, just taking a look ahead at events we have coming up. Uh, Pedal for Polio. Uh, once again, this will be the 14th through the 19th. They will be uh, in Trinidad on the 19th, and that's where we're going to participate in a potluck um, that evening for, uh, for the riders. So <clears throat> I mentioned this in my email, our auction today, uh, all the funds that we've raised for that will be going uh, towards this ride. Um, Bob, as you know, is a polio survivor and he's 75 and, and he's doing the ride so that's pretty amazing and we're going to see how much money that we can raise for him. We have the potential uh, to raise uh, 240 something thousand dollars with uh, Bill and uh, Melinda Gates match and uh, you know, participation with all the clubs so it's a pretty significant ride and, and we'll just show our support today and, and onward and uh, uh, let me know if you want to be a part of that. You can, you can still do a, a leg of the race if you'd like to if you want to go from you know, Trinidad, to, which is Moonstone, you can do that. <laughs> That's the telling, right? Um, but, but let me know if you'd like to do that, and uh, we'll get you connected to the right place. So that's coming up soon. Uh, also, we have the uh, fourth annual uh, Kevin Ebert Memorial Run, and that's Sunday, uh, 827 at 9 a.m. I believe that's at Redwood Park. You can sign up online to do that. Um, if you just type in uh, the Memorial Run, it'll, it'll Google up and uh, this year, the proceeds for that are going to go support the Humble Bay Trail, which will be a trail on the 101 side between uh, Arcata and Eureka. So that's that's really exciting. And so uh, anyway, it'll be a, it'll also be dedicated to Kevin as well. So uh, Charlie, do you have any more info on that? Covered it. Okay, that, that's it. Yeah, there's a, a 10k a, a 10k and a two mile run. So uh, pick your poison uh, and uh, and show up. It's going to be a Good event. <clears throat> I'm gonna call uh, Romy in here. Romy, <clears throat> we got the uh, out, of, out of the uh, darkness walk coming up too. Uh, that's uh, Saturday, September 9th at nine here on the plaza. We, uh, for the past couple of years, have supported this. So um, I think she's counting money right now, but she'll <laughs> she's shaking her head. But she'll uh, she'll be in here. Uh, but anyway. Uh, we're going to put a team together for that. Essentially, it's a, um, a suicide prevention walk. Um, it's really uh, important. It uh, uh, needs a lot to uh, a couple of people in our club and whatnot. And we've had, like I said, a team in the past couple of years, so we'll be happy to support that and do that again. And we'll get a sign up going around to, uh, to make that happen. So, um, anyway, that, oh, go ahead. Just Here's a quick announcement. Um, Isabella leaves on the 5th. From San Francisco, so she won't. We won't be able to see her off, but we will get to greet Isabella, our inbound, <laughs> uh, August 9th at midnight at Arcata Redwood, whatever <laughs> airport. Uh, so we've been sending some postcards out to her, and um, 
it always, you know, they arrive absolutely exhausted, not expecting anybody to be around at midnight. So anybody who would like to come and greet her, it'll take five minutes of your time when you're up there. And uh, it's always really nice for them to walk in and just be astounded that there's all these people <laughs> um, in the yeah. middle of the night in the middle of nowhere. So <laughs> August 9th at midnight. <laughs> It's kind of a metaphor yeah, for coming to Humboldt County. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Sounds great. Is, it, is this part of our, our program to um, plan to have all of our exchange students inbound, outbound, be named Isabella so we don't get confused? It makes it easier for me. I, I, I think so. That's helpful. <laughs> all right. So with that, we're going to transition over to Michael here, and he's going to give us his craft talk. So. Uh, now that again, okay, so I joined Rotary in 1986, uh, and, I, and I, I was a charter member of OPEN. And, uh, but then, when they formed this club, three months after they formed this club, I came over and joined this club. But I took a four-year break, so that's why I'm standing up here with a blue badge, giving you a craft talk. Uh, and I'm really impressed that he gave prior notice that a guy whose last name was Boring as an accountant was giving a crap talk and anybody's here. <laughs> so I, uh, finally, I don't have any uh, pictures because I'm moving to Portland and all my goofy pictures from the 1960s are packed away with regret because uh, it would have been an interesting slideshow. But uh, in any case, uh, fundamentally, I am a small town Rocky Mountain boy. I was born in Montana. I was adopted at birth, and I'll say more about that later. Uh, my adopted family was a perfect fit from a small town in Colorado called Windsor. It's just like Fremont. Mom and Dad grew up across the street from each other. Uh, but I'm the only redhead in that gene pool, which has always been a, a real reminder that he came from some other planet. Uh, um, I was raised on the Colorado Plains in a little town called Lamar, about four hours, four and a half hours from Denver. Um, it was the real west. Uh, the Santa Fe Trail runs through Lamar. Uh, it's the heart of the Comanche Empire, which actually most people don't realize. They were the prototypical Plains buffalo hunting tribe that raised all the horses in the west. But they kind of peaked in the, in the late 1760s, uh, 1770s. They began to decline. Uh, Vince Fort was five miles away, and uh, White Earp was our sheriff at one time. <laughs> so, uh, my dad is a theater manager. Uh, I am a walking encyclopedia of the movies of the 50s, because I can see them all for free. I saw Davy Crockett seven times. Um, <laughs> uh, and my mom is a clerk of a local court. Um, I have a second home state besides Colorado, which is Oregon. I had very bad hay fever, and so from the time I was 10 till I was 16, I summered in Oregon. Um, two summers in Astoria, two summers in Newport, two summers in Redmond. My sister and brother-in-law were my second parents. She's 12 years older than me. And so I've got uh, tons of relatives in the state that I'm about to move to. I'm the only Californian in my family, and I was right on the edge of it here in the Northwest. So, uh, one of the reasons I'm in Humboldt is because of those years in Oregon. When I came here with my closest friend from college, uh, who was an Arcata High graduate, I went, wait a minute, this is the Pacific Northwest. And I spent a lot of time here. You know. So at 14, my parents were divorced, and I went to high school in Denver. It was a perfect world. I lived in Leave it to Beaverland, a little town about the size of Fortuna, until I was 14. And then I got to be in a city where I was old enough to access and ride the buses to play golf at all the golf courses. In 65, I came to California to go to Stanford, and um, I married my Palo Alto girl, Sharon, and we've been married 46 years uh, so far. <laughs> uh, I had a, uh, I came humble, and I had a health career, a uh, healthcare career initially. Uh, I was uh, director of the cardiopulmonary uh, services at Humble uh, at uh, St. Joseph for a while, but I, I had a degree in psychology at Stanford, and. Uh, I, uh, for some reason, I had, a, I had sort of a knack for working with people who were having difficulty in the healthcare environment, and I gravitated into about a seven year career of um, writing training programs for healthcare professionals around the United States and how to be better listeners to their patients and, and deal with the psychosocial side of things. And that got me involved in the ground floor of hospice movement. I was president of hospice for 12 years, no, eight years. I was on the board for 12 years, 
in the early formative years of hospice. Um, and that, that always looked back as something I'm very proud of being a part of. Um, but meanwhile, I was also realizing that I kind of rolled into healthcare just by chance when I came here. And uh, so I, I found accounting um, and decided that uh, it was kind of an interesting track for me. It was, you, you, got, to, you got to duel with the uh, IRS in my, my 60s side like that. Uh, <laughs> and, but it also rewarded people who keep up. It's a continually changing body of knowledge, and I like that. And most importantly, the middle word in my profession, certified public accountant, is public, which most people forget. I mean, they think of us with you know green eye shades and, and you know the prototypical accountant is not someone who's socially very adept to most people's jargon. But the fact is that the heart of what we do is people, and that's I would not be doing it if it weren't for the fact that it is about people. And uh, it's very intimate. It's a long running. A long-running relationship. Your doctor may see you with your clothes off, but I know a whole lot more about you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I joined. Uh, I joined. I took my coursework part-time at Humboldt. I joined Alex Evans and Company in 1982. I became a partner in 1986. I'm the senior partner now. We're quite a bit bigger than when I started, uh, and so uh, I've got two daughters, both of whom live in Portland. Uh, 36 and 31, both Arcata High graduates, and U of O graduates. And my uh, granddaughter is eight. Uh, she's the grandparent magnet up there, that's getting us up there. Um, over the years, I've had lots and lots of board memberships. When I was in my 30s, I at one time was on five boards and I was president of three of them at the same time. And I kind of, at the time I was about 45, I said, I'm going to back off of boards. And I really got more involved in the kind of things we do here in Rotary. And running, takes the holidays, or whatever programs are going on. Uh, I was a runner for years until my doctor told me my knees didn't want me to do that anymore. I kayaked for years. That was probably my greatest single obsession of my life uh, in terms of <coughs> activities. Um, I still get on the water and, and get hypnotized by the river, but I don't do this white water like I used to. Um, music has always been something for me. I was a little, kind of a little piano protege as a kid in the Plains of Colorado, going to competitions all over the Rocky Mountain West. Um, but I sing, and I still sing. Uh, and play a little bit of guitar, but I'm too lazy to learn how to really play it. So. And then I coached a lot. I was really, really, really involved in coaching for a long time. Basketball, soccer, baseball, and triathlons. My daughters are both triathletes. Um, now, to end this up, my 60th birthday party, or gift, was finding my birth family. Uh, and so uh, I had been, I was trying to find my birth mother just to let her know that if she'd ever worried about giving me up, she should stop worrying because everything worked out great. I didn't really need to have contact with her. Anyway, we found them. And so I have seven siblings. <laughs> my mother and father gave me up for adoption and got married four months later and had seven more children, six of whom are brothers. So it was very interesting when I met them back in when I was, I'm now 69, almost 70, but almost 10 years ago, um, to be in a room where everybody had red gold hair, <laughs> which I'd never been in before. Uh, so, <laughs> and it's gone really great. They, they knew nothing about me. There was a couple of aunts who knew something about it, but it was all very quietly done. And my, my mother was uh, <clears throat> carrying me very low, and, and she actually worked until a week before she had me. And people didn't know that she was pregnant. That's great. So uh, the saying was, my, my, my youngest brother is nine years and three months later than me, his birthday. The saying was that all my dad had to do was throw his cowboy hat on the bedpost and my mother got pregnant. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and that's probably all about me uh, that I need to tell you. Uh, <laughs> it's been a wacky ride, and I love being part of this club. I love the commitment this club has to do what Rotary is really about. And uh, so that's why I came back. I took a little break, but I, I knew I was going to come back. Before we get to final Friday, Bella, do you want to talk about your work? Oh, yeah.
Um, so in last efforts to raise money for my trip, um, I made little boxes that are full of chocolate chip cookies, uh, brownies, and coconut uh, macaroons drizzled with chocolate, and there's also um, a store-bought hazelnut Hershey's Kisses in there. Um, so anything would be super helpful, and I would appreciate anything. So hey, take two. Hey, here's where I take them. <laughs> 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 There are six of them. She's going to Denmark in a week. Uh, it's expensive, so I think uh, 25 bucks a box, and I'll buy one. Who else? One, two, three, four. Okay, we're good. Thank you. She was too much. She was too much. Um, and that's okay. You know, you don't have to bank. We'll do all of it for you. So um, $25 to her, and you can take a box of hers. Okay. So. Before we get started on Final Friday, we have a little bit of unfinished business. It's always interesting to me that um, sometimes rotary time is like um, a glacier. And I'd like <laughs> past President Howard to come forward, please. And now, I've, I've told two men in this room that I was going to have them come up here today, and they both said, what have I done wrong? <laughs> so, I really have a bad reputation. <laughs> so last month, um, Awards from your year as president, 2015-16, were delivered by the assistant governor to me, and you weren't here, so now I'm going to do it. So it's taken a while. It has taken a while. So there are um, two really special ones to my heart, too, and one is the Rotary Foundation. Arcata Sunrise has presented a certificate of appreciation for its financial support of In Polio Now. Make History Today campaign. Together we fulfill our promise to the children of the world and eradicate polio. So that is that. The other one is this. Can you see it? So that year, everyone gave, averaged $100, and everyone participated, 100% participation. <laughs> Club Awards, 2015-16, the Governor's Award for Rotary Excellent Excellence, Rotary Club of Arcata Sunrise. I guess we were just excellent in every way. <laughs> we already knew. Um, also, excellence in vocational service. Thank you very much to Jeff and Ray and everybody who's on the vocational committee. And excellence in leadership, which I guess is just how. Uh -huh. I like it. <laughs> so these will go on the banner over there, and they're nice and fresh. Congratulations. I'm going to, here, you can hold those, but I'm going to take them back. It's where I came up somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah. congratulations. <laughs> because of you, and how active you were during my year and every year. And also, I want to especially thank uh, Barbara, who's not here, Barbara Browning, who I remember wrote up the application for the award, applications for the awards. That was quite a job. But thanks to you and to Barbara for making all of that happen. Thank you, Howard. Rotary year, we, um, I made the commitment that everybody who donated at least $100 to Rotary would get a 100th anniversary of the Rotary Foundation pin. So I would like Harry and Charlie and Craig and Nick to come forward, please. I'm going up there. That worked really well. And um, many other people in the room have gotten the pen, and I appreciate their generosity too. But thank you very much. Thank you. And so, but I think I should make this at next. Now, um, you know, one of my favorite parts, besides collecting all your checks 
and sitting in the Rotary Foundation is um, giving Paul Harris awards. And for those of you in the room who aren't clear about what a Paul Harris is, it's somebody who has contributed or have been contributed on their behalf a total of $1,000 to the Rotary Foundation. And just because you have one Paul Harris doesn't mean you have to stop, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I'm really glad that um, Chris is here, and if you could come up too, because that's the this is for you. Oh, wow. Well. but we do put a little peer pressure on people to do it anyway, so it's not completely optional. But um, if you have a month assigned to you that doesn't work for you, just give me a little bit of notice and I can move you, that's easy. When I get an email at 5 o'clock in the morning like I did this morning saying, oh gosh, I'm not going to be there today, that's a little harder to, to backfill. So just it, it, you can have any month you want of the 8th, but just let me know. Thank you. Okay. So I, I like local products, so I had uh, asked Elizabeth, my wife, to go in our backyard and uh, make a little succulent garden because it pairs really nicely with uh, also local Humboldt Honey Wine. This is their uh, sweet wine, and my best way to describe it would be it, it tastes succulent. So I thought they went together and there you go. <laughs> okay. Excellent. And I have a favorite number, and I've started with this number every time, and I get grief for it. But do we have $50 for succulents and alcohol? <laughs> we have fifty dollars for succulents and alcohol. Do we have sixty? Do we have sixty? Do we have seventy? Seventy. Do we have eighty? Looking for eighty. We have eighty. Do we have ninety? Ninety. Do we have one hundred? 
100. 90 going once. 90 going twice. Sold. That's step that two. Yeah. So we have a box of spices. Would you like to say something about okay. this? So this is my, um, one of my latest passions are Pinsy Spices. They have, um, they do a lot of online business, but they also have a shop in Santa Rosa where I happen to have a cabin, and it's just amazing how, you know, <laughs> often I can get there. So this is their soul box. It has um, a chicken rub, it has cinnamon, Florida spice, Ozark spice, an herb mix, adobo, curry, and Cajun seasoning. And there are recipe cards to go with each of the spices for ideas. And there is a soul pin. Um, Bill Pinsey, who owns this company, it's uh, based in Janesville, Wisconsin, and they do a lot of mail order too, um, talks a lot about uh, love and how important love is, especially in light of some of the things that are going on in our country and world right now. And he says, if you feed people good food, they, they just behave more nicely. <laughs> you know, it's worth, it's, worth a, it's worth a shot. So this is a really nice box of Pinsy Spices. And spicing up your life sounds like $50 is a great way to start. <laughs> so does anybody have $50 for a box of spices? We have fifty dollars. Do we have sixty? We have sixty. Do we have seventy? We have seventy. We have, we have seventy. Do we have eighty? We have eighty. Do we have ninety? We have eighty going once. Eighty going twice. Wait. I have two. We do. Would you like? I, I just happen to have another box. <laughs> <laughs> we have two. Sold at eighty. Mediterranean cookbook, two mugs, two napkins, two kitchen towels, matching apron, retro kitchen timer, which is possibly the cutest thing I've seen <laughs> in like a year. So um, a bottle for whatever, and one, oh, she's not kidding, very freshly painted basket. It's slightly sticky on the hand. <laughs> the bottle is for whatever you wish to put in the bottle. Everybody gets excited when they see a bottle. <laughs> Let's start the bidding at fifty dollars. Do we have fifty for the Mediterranean basket? We have fifty. Do we have sixty? We're looking for sixty. We have fifty. Anybody else? Oh, we have sixty. Do we have seventy? We have seventy. Do we have eighty? We have eighty. Do we have ninety? We have ninety. Do we have a hundred? We'll, we'll, we'll go once to Tom. Oh, we have a hundred. <laughs> Do we have a hundred? Do we have a hundred and ten? Hundred going once. Hundred going twice. Sold. <laughs> certificate at the spa at personal choice. Um, pedicures, manicures, massages, facials, hair cutting, um, whatever you would like to do. It's a really fun place to go. They have three pedicure stations so you can take your friends. Men can get pedicures too. My, I got my husband a pedicure last week and he was very nervous and now he's a fan. So it was just an expensive thing because now he wants one more often than no, but anyway, so, <laughs> so don't don't disappoint me on this because I like to start at fifty. <laughs> Do we have fifty dollars? We have we have fifty. Do we have sixty? Sixty. Do we have seventy? We have seventy. Do we have eighty? Eighty. Do we have ninety? It's fundraising. It's 
90. Do we have 100? We have 100. It's a beautiful Your wife would love it. 100. Do we have 110? 100 going once. 100 going twice. Sold. Come on. gave us a lovely basket that he's going to make me read all about. <laughs> well, maybe basket's the wrong term. And that's not all of it. That's not all of it. It's my ex Here we go. It's a summer apple cider spiking kit. This kit has you covered when it comes to cooling off this summer and fall. The two gallons of pure organic Fieldbrook hand pressed apple cider is great straight up in a tall glass, and then the, there are the spirits to spike up your mimosas, or maybe there's a, maybe the situation calls for a slice of apple pie in a glass to cool things down. So he has two recipes: one for spiced, spiked apple cider cocktail, and one for Fieldbrook mimosas. And this is all the hot stuff, and then the cider is in his car. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In a nice chest. In a nice chest in his car. Okay. So there's an apple and a lemon, dark rum, fireball cinnamon whiskey, um, and a bottle of champagne. There's, there's, only a, there's only one small problem. I'm going to start this a little different because I'm starting at 50, so is there 60? Do we have, do we have 60? Looking, looking for 60? 60. Do we have 70? 70. Do we have 80? Great. 80. Great. Do we have we have 90? Do we have 100? Do we have a hundred? We have 100. We have 110. 110. Great cider. <laughs> There's a lot of alcohol in here. <laughs> 110. Okay. 120. Do we have 130? We have 120. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Joyce. Does somebody have a total of what we just? Five seventy is what I came up with. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So that all will go to um, support the polio eradication <coughs> campaign and to support District Governor Bob's ride. Um, he's coming to the club <coughs> this September. September. Uh, yes, September ninth. Okay. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I will get everyone an accounting of where you are in your total giving to date, and it will also have your Rotary account number on it. And so I, I highly recommend that you go into the Rotary website and register. You can you use your um, ID number, which I'll give to you, and then you set up a password. And there are all sorts of fascinating things you can see in there. It tells you the exact date you became a Rotarian. It says if you don't remember that off the top of your head. Although in my case it doesn't have the exact date because I changed clubs, so it has the exact date I became a member of this club, but not a Rotarian. Um, and there's just a lot to look at, and there's a lot of club information and international information. You can see the international information without your number, but having your number gets you in there. You can put a profile in there. You can put a picture in there. You can sign up for interest groups. So there's really a lot to do on the Rotary website. Including donating. You, Pardon and me? And of course you can donate. And you can donate, and there are some people in the room who are part of Rotary Direct. Raise your hand. And I know um, Lisa Hemphill is too, and Scott Heller and Chris Hemphill. So that is a way for you to uh, let the foundation know how much money you would like to go on any uh, any periodicity you want. You can do twenty-five dollars a month. You can do thousand dollars a year. You can just do it however you want. They will automatically take it out of your checking account or charge it to your credit card. And it's a really a nice kind of seamless way to donate to the foundation. You can also anytime you want. Just write a check to the Rotary Foundation and give it to me, and I will send it off for you, too. So we want to make it as easy as possible for you to support the great work that the Rotary Foundation does. Questions? Can I, can I just say also, if, if you ever, I, I work for a nonprofit. I've worked for nonprofits for many years. Uh, if you look at things like Charity Navigator and some of the other charity tracking websites, um, Rotary International, Rotary Foundation, I should say, is, is one of the most efficient um, efficient charities that you can give to. Four stars uh, on Charity Navigator. 
Pardon? Four stars on charity now. Four stars, yeah. And, and or five, whatever's the best. Seven. <laughs> do I hear, do I hear eight? <laughs> um, but it, your money is going, because, because we do so much volunteer work as Rotarians and on our fellow Rotarians around the world do the same thing. That's what makes it so efficient. And um, you know, you know your money's getting where it needs to go. Thank you, and that's quite true. Uh, the other thing that Rotary um, is very interested in, Ian Reesley, who's our president this year, international president this year, is very interested in capturing just the second part of what you said, and that's the volunteer hours that we donate. So there's a, a metric in there, and we'll talk more about how we do that and just talk about, yes, we gave this much money to the Rotary Foundation, but we donated this many hours to our community. And you've probably heard that our incoming president, the 2018-19 president, Sam Awari, passed away suddenly two weeks ago. He died after um, com from complications of surgery. And Marty and I got to meet him and, and hear him in Atlanta because we went to the All Africa Breakfast and he was only the second Rotary president from the continent of Africa ever. And it, it was really, it, we were so sad to hear that he died because he had some great ideas and he was really you know, passionate about Rotary and had huge support from his entire continent, not just his, his country of Uganda. So um, next week, the Rotary Foundation, or the Rotary Nominating Committee for President will meet and select two presidents, one for next year and one for the year after, which they were going to meet to do anyway. So we'll know in the next week or so who our next two presidents are. Anything else? Thank you very much. See you next week. Oh, we have a raffle and don't forget cookies. Thank you, Terry. That was that was great. And Bob's going to be really uh, pleased to hear how much money we raised for his uh, for his ride. So that's really really exciting. Uh, yes, it's raffle time. Let's see the raffle. My fidget spinner. Three one oh. zero. <coughs>
people affected by that, the, the stigma of it makes the pain that much worse. And, and so to talk about suicide and to, and to share with our community um, and, and other families and folks that go through that pain is really healing. And so um, it's, a, it's a, a great thing to be part of. And I hope that you'll join the, the team that I create. Um, it, for some reason, I couldn't do it on the website last night and I got really frustrated, but I will. And I will send out an invitation to all of you to join our team. And um, let's bring suicide out of the darkness and talk about it and stand together as a community. Romeo, is that a Saturday or a Sunday? It is Saturday. The 9th. The 9th. Mm -hmm. the 9th, the 9th or something. Oh, it's the 9th, I guess. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Probably. So then, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that sounds right. Mm -hmm. And then um, Saturday the 9th. Not the 10th. Well, that's a pleasure. Thank you, Romeo. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we're going to go on Rotarian of the Month. Here we go. Um, I would like to recognize this individual who filled some mighty, mighty big shoes. Um, He's here every morning before I'm here, uh, along with his crew. Uh, he helped me get things going and, and learn how to navigate meetings and navigate our system here, which we all know can be a little bit uh, finicky at times, to say the least. So, uh, and, and a whole bunch of other things for the club. So, uh, Nick Torres, if you could come up. Hey. Uh, So that about wraps up our meeting today. As Rotarians, we faced a lot of challenges, and I thought this quote was uh, very appropriate for our club. It always seems impossible until it's done. So keep up the good work, and we'll uh, see you guys next Friday. Uh, so, two, two things. Woo! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you bought a Rotary auction item, the check goes to the Rotary Foundation. Deliver it to me, please. Don't forget to, to give Isabella $25. Okay. <laughs> All right. With that, uh, we'll see you guys next Friday, and uh, meeting is adjourned.